I'm so sorry I'm late. You won't believe the afternoon I've just had. Oh, lemonade, thanks. No ice? Not much lemon and sugar either. So just water then. It's okay. I'm not a fussy person. Anyway, yeah, my mother had one of her breakups, and she was crying, and I was trying to be a nice, supportive daughter. Mom, your stupid boyfriend stole my favorite jacket. I know it's him. He's always had his eye on it. And if I ever find him wearing it, I'll strangle him with it. By the time I was done comforting her, I missed the bus. Then I dashed to the subway station and barely managed to squeeze into a jam-packed train. And then this couple started baby talking in my face. The guy was all like, aw, my baby broke a nail. I'm gonna kiss that boo-boo away. And the girl was like, oh, Schmoopy, I love you so much. Oh, God. How can anyone with an ounce of self-respect talk like that? Then they started kissing, literally in my ear. I mean, the girl was leaning against me for support. And I could see the guy had spinach stuck in his teeth. Ugh. I, I just couldn't take it anymore, okay? I shouted at them to get a room, and then everyone around me started booing me for harassing two people in love. Someone even threw a tomato at me. This is why I hate romantic love and how ridiculous it makes people. Actually, wait, don't start thinking I'm some love-hating, bitter person just yet. <sighs> Hi, I'm Fiona, and before I explain myself, please like and subscribe. I grew up with a single mom and my half-sister Mila, who's five years older than me. The two are like <laughs> peas in a pod. Basically, both of them aren't acting their respective ages. And me? Well, the only thing I have in common with them is that we all like chocolate, which is nothing remarkable given that 86% of the world's population likes chocolate. No, I didn't check this on Google, but you get my point, right? Mom had Mila at 18, and then five years later, she had me with another loser, who I kind of feel lucky not knowing because I've seen the guys mom picks and it's not pretty. Like once when I was seven, mom brought home this guy who claimed to be, wait for it, a prince from a far off land. Even then I could tell he was just a con man with a fake accent. And look, he came bearing royal gifts. This felt for mom because her back hurts a lot, a makeup set for Mila, who was 12 at the time, and a watch for me. Trust me, this is the original condition. So, which country are you from? Pajama Stan. My people wear pajamas day and night, and everyone's comfortable and happy. And where is this place? Can you show me on this map? Ah, uh, see that tiny island next to Pakistan? That one. You're pointing to Africa, dude. Pakistan's in Asia. It recently shifted to Africa. Your map's old. That doesn't make any sense. Your mama doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> he stayed for free with us for three weeks, then finally stole mom's jewelry and vanished off the face of the earth, pretty much like the country he rules. And my sister? Well, she has a serial dating problem. You know those girls who just can't be without a boyfriend ever? She's already in another relationship, for she's fully out of the last one. Also, Mila has two types. One is the macho criminal type. Like, if she ever wants a reunion party for her exes, she'd have to arrange it in prison. This last guy she was dating had tattoos all over and gold chains around his neck. And surprise, surprise, he turned out to be some low-level drug dealer. Talk about a walking cliche. The second type is pathetic losers, boys with terrible self-esteem who keep telling Mila that she's way out of their league. Now, these guys are slightly better than the macho jerks, but I don't respect them either. For example, see this guy? Let's call him Peter. What is this loser even wearing? The first time I met Peter, I walked into Mila's room thinking some homeless dude had broken in, and I hit him with my shoe. Which brings me to a question for all you guys out there. What happened to basic grooming and occasionally washing your face? Is that a very tall order? If you're watching, please comment below and explain this to me, okay? Because when I see old Hollywood movies with their impeccably dressed heroes, I just swoon. When and when? Why did guys decide it was cool to look like you just got out of bed and wear low-rise pajama pants that introduced me to your butt crack on the first date? I haven't even fully observed your eye color yet, and I had to see that? Uh, no, no, no. I did not want this level of intimacy. Sorry, sorry, I got off track. So yeah, Mom and Mila's collective dating records plays out like the soap operas they love. Never-ending and full of dumb characters and unnecessary drama. And I swore I'd never be like them. I'd pick the right guy. Because it's not that I hate romance. Like, come on, who doesn't want someone like Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice? There's a reason why 91.5% of the female population adores Mr. Darcy. No, I didn't Google that either. I just make this stuff up. Get with the program. Of course I want some handsome some sophisticated guy to see me across the room and be captivated by my intelligent eyes. Then we exchange witty banter and stinging insults, and he falls hopelessly in love with me. And I find out that, despite his flaws, 
He is in fact my perfect match. But in reality, I just can't seem to get past the flaws. I swear I try, but it's not been looking good since the sixth grade. See this love letter a boy gave me back then? I'm writing with a red crayon to show my love is like a lion. I'm writing with a brown to show you I'm down. Circle, I love, hate you, Mark. He wrote this in sixth grade. What was I supposed to be impressed by? The obviously low IQ? Looking into my recent dating history, let's start with Mr. Buttcrack. He works at the local movie theater, and he looks all right in his uniform. He cracked a funny movie line, I laughed, and we exchanged numbers. Such a mistake. Sup, girl? Sup, girl? No, hello, nice to see you. I'll pull out your chair. Nah. Why even bother using proper words, girl? He chewed like a cow. Told me he had no plans to go to college because he already had a job and said he was going to live rent-free with his parents forever. Sounds sweet, right? Oh, you see that dork with the broken glasses? I gave him a wedgie yesterday. <laughs> I couldn't wait for this date to end. I leaned in for a quick goodbye hug just to be polite, but he kissed me instead, and it felt like kissing the bark of a tree. Dude, ever heard of a thing called lip balm? Then there's Mr. Pretentious Windbag. A friend set me up with him, saying he was just my type. Yeah, we're not friends anymore. The foie gras is spectacular, almost as good as the one I have in France. Have you tried the caviar yet? Please have some. It's not every day you get to taste such exquisiteness. And oh, this rabbit? What's that smoky flavor? I'm getting hints of oak and maple. Nobody cares, dude. Just shut up and let me eat. I tried ending this evening with a hug, too, but he leaned in for a kiss and just pause for a sec. See how moist his lips are? Like, they're too moist. What does he use on them? French butter? Ugh. Okay, you can continue now. There's no getting out of this kiss for me. Ugh. Then there was Mr. Sweet Tooth. He kept calling me things like cupcake, muffin, sugar cookie, cream puff. What am I, a girl or a bakery item? Then the ugly crier. He actually seemed fine, till we went to see a sad play together. And I've never in my life seen anyone look so hideous when they cry. And so loud. <laughs> He's not with me. I don't know this loser. Whoever you are, man, get a grip. He broke up with me for not having a heart. At least I have self-control. The gay guy in denial. He kept checking out the male waiter's butts on our date. So what can a girl do? The shirtless guy. Do I even need to elaborate? The moonwalker. Yeah. All he wanted to do was moonwalk in public and have everyone tell him he's the next Michael Jackson. Oh, so annoying. Yeah. I'd rather be single. One evening, our rich neighbor's kids had arranged a grand birthday party and they'd invited the whole neighborhood. Neighborhood. Mom and Mila looked like they were going to a dance club. Why are you two dressed up like that? I know you're on a manhunt, but it's a kid's birthday party for crying out loud. And kids are supervised by adults. You always have to be ready, love. What if today's the day I meet my soulmate? Exactly. And why are you always dressed like a nursery school teacher, Fiona? What? My cardigan and skirt are cute. Lose the cardigan. And I trim the skirt by about six inches. I might as well go in my underwear then. Now we're getting somewhere. Ugh, these two. Mom and Mila did find guys to flirt with while I sat in a corner eating cake and wondering why people ever willingly have children. They scream at the pitch of opera singers, carry a million germs, and think the universe revolves around them. Just then, our flustered-looking neighbor said she had to take her twins to the bathroom and could I look after her baby? And then she just dumped him on me. FYI, I don't hate babies. Like, I'm not a psychopath. It's just that, well, babies are boring. And it's unfair fair to expect me to go gaga over them just because I'm a girl. No, my womb doesn't tingle every time I see a baby. And just look at this one. All it's doing is staring at me and making spit bubbles. This is about as much fun as spending time with a potato. Just then, I spotted the party clown and handed the baby to him. Can you just hang on to it till this woman with red hair comes around? She's the mom of the crazy birthday twins. Just hand it over in one piece, okay? Are you calling the baby it? Yeah, I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl. Also, I really don't care. It's a girl. And she's my niece. Oh, uh, she's very cute. Wait, your niece? Yeah, I'm the birthday twin's uncle. I live here. Who are you again? We've been living next door for ages. I've never seen you around before. Next door? Are you? Wait, Fiona? I'm Edward. We used to play together as kids. I went away to boarding school and then college. Oh my god, Edward, yes! You're the weirdo who would eat Snickers bars with a knife and a fork. You're the crazy girl who waxed my leg and said all men are loser babies when I cried. You were kind of a jerk to me, actually. Looks like you haven't changed much. Excuse me? I mean, you still seem like the warm, affectionate soul I remember. I'll see you around. Don't hold your breath. 
That clown sounded condescending, right? Like, I think he just called me a jerk, right? A few days later, I got out of college and headed to my favorite Chinese restaurant for lunch. This place has been around for 50 years, guys. And if you're ever in this part of town, you gotta try Mrs. Jianbing's dumplings. And what the? There was a sign outside the restaurant that said sold. I rushed in to find Mrs. Jianbing telling other customers that they'd only be serving for another month. But why did you sell this place? Everyone loves your food. Oh, we've been struggling a lot lately, dear. Besides, the people who bought us are going to open a huge Chinese restaurant next door. We can't compete with them. It's for the best. Oh, there's one of our new buyers. I turned around to see a young guy walk in, and he looked good. The hair, the crisp white shirt, the perfectly creased pants, and then the cologne hit me. Oof. Hello, Mrs. Jianbing. How you doing today? Oh, hi, Fiona. Is everything okay? You're not blinking much. How my name, you know, do you, how? Are you having a stroke? It's me, Edward. Edward? Edward who? Edward the clown? You? You bought this place? My family? But yeah, it was my idea. We're opening a restaurant next door. Yeah, I heard. Don't you feel guilty forcing the owners to sell? We made them a great offer and they accepted. We didn't force anyone. Well, you're still responsible for shutting them down. And trust me, the people of this town won't support your business. We're loyal around here. I've done my research and I think we'll do just fine. Also, I think you'll be a regular at our place. You think wrong. Okay, no worries. You won't be missed. Ugh, the nerve of rich people. Just driving out small business and then acting like they're doing humanity a favor. Besides, what did this guy know about Chinese food? Later that night, I found Mila spying on him with binoculars. Have you seen that boy next door? He's scrumptious. Stop that, I'm pretty sure it's illegal. Also, he's younger than you. Yeah, so, you know, you were kind of mean to him as a kid. I don't remember that. I'm sure you do. He was a neat freak who didn't like getting his clothes dirty, and he'd always arrange his things in a certain order, and you kept messing with him. Also, you gave him a wedgie once. Honestly, I'm not sure why I was a jerk to Edward. It's probably Mila and Mom who gave me my issues with boys from an early age. But why was this guy getting under my skin now? Oh, yeah, it's because he called me a jerk and he was shutting down my favorite Chinese place. I had to keep hating him. And I seemed to bump into him way more than I would have liked. I was going over to Mrs. Jianbing's every day now. And Edward was always overseeing the construction next door. But he also frequently visited the coffee shop where I worked as a waitress. Mm-mm-mm. What shall I have today? Yeah, take your time. I've got nothing to do. Hmm, um, uh, let's see. Ah, okay, never mind. I'll just have my usual. I don't have your usual memorized. I literally order the same thing every day. And you thought I put it down in my diary? No, just your brain. But it's okay, I understand. Waitressing is hard for you. Are you saying I'm dumb? No, I'm just saying that you don't have the best people skills. You should think about joining the army. And you should think about joining the garbage dump. And then one night, Edward turned up at our door with a cake and flowers. You took a job as a delivery boy? Sorry, wrong house. These are for your mom and sister. I never visit someone's place empty-handed. What a gentleman. So, anything for me? Yeah, a proposal. I'd like you to be my date for a charity gala. Did you just ask me out? What made you think I'd say yes? Well, you keep spying on me with your binoculars. Clearly, you have a crush on me. That's not me. I mean, it's not anybody here. You're hallucinating. Okay, if you insist. And it's not a real date. I just need any girl, and you're my neighbor. So, it's convenient. My ex will probably be there, and I didn't want to turn up alone, okay? Say yes, and I'll find another coffee shop to go to every day. You got yourself a deal. I know he was the rich, annoying guy I had to hate, but it was hard to remember that when he picked me up for the gala in his tuxedo. And then he looked at me, not in a sleazy way, but in his cool, smooth, I'm noticing everything about you way that made my knees buckle a bit. It's an art, guys and this dude knows it. You look lovely. At the gala, I could see how people responded to his charm. He pulled out my chair first, ate with exquisite manners, and made sure to include everyone in the conversation. Just then, a lady asked if someone could hold her baby for a while, and Edward immediately volunteered. And something really strange started happening to me. What is it about men and babies put together? I mean, I'd seen Edward the Clown with his niece before, but Edward James Bond cooing at a baby? This was different. Something about him looking so manly, but being sweet and gentle with her was short-circuiting my brain. And was that my womb tingling finally? Did I want Edward or did I want a baby? I felt so confused. I need some fresh air. It's getting hot in here. Be right back.
When I return, I stopped short seeing Edward standing next to a beautiful girl. I felt I was watching in slow motion as she <laughs> laughed, then reached out and casually took off a piece of lint from his coat with her perfectly manicured hand. Except that there was nothing casual about it. It was such a girl-friendly move. You don't take lint off a random guy's coat. Dang it, they looked like a golden Hollywood couple, and I didn't like it. So, that girl you were talking to, who was she? Oh, that's my ex. Right, <laughs> she's gorgeous. Yeah, she really is. Do you think she seemed happy to see me? She looked happy, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, thanks, Fiona. You were a big help tonight. He ended the night with a strong pat on my back, like he was burping a baby. True to his word, Edward stopped coming to the coffee shop, and I felt disappointed. A few times when I went to the Chinese restaurant, he wasn't there either. Yeah, he'd reconnected with Miss Universe for sure and was busy with her. And I didn't want to care, but I did. A few days later, I got home from work to find Mom looking upset. Mila went on a trip with her boyfriend and was supposed to be back yesterday. I haven't heard from her and her cell phone is off. We called all her friends, but no one had a clue. We thought if she wasn't back by morning, we'd report her missing, but I was sick with worry. I went out for some air and had just walked a few steps when I ran straight into someone. Great, I'd ordered this specialty cake for mom. Hey Fiona, what's wrong? I probably looked worse than the ugly crier telling Edward about Mila. He asked me everything we knew about her boyfriend and said he'd report it to the police immediately. We'll find her. There's probably a good reason why her phone's off. Get some rest and I'll keep you updated. Mom and I must have dozed off while waiting to hear from Edward because it was morning when I woke up to find Mila burst in and mom crying as she hugged her. I jumped to hug her too and then pushed her hard. Where were you, idiot? I was at this cabin with Kyle and his friends, and suddenly there was a police raid. We all got thrown in jail, and I wasn't allowed to make a phone call. Kyle is part of some criminal gang. Can you believe it? Of course I can believe it. God, don't you ever learn anything? Maybe you would if you stopped dating for two seconds and spent some time alone with yourself to think about why you keep messing up. Is your self-worth so low that you need constant validation from stupid pieces of garbage? Fiona, honey, calm down. No, Mom, I will not calm down. You two keep acting like dumb teenagers, and it's not cute. Just grow up already. I was still fuming in my room hours later when there was a knock on my door. Can we talk without you biting my head off? We can try. Look, you're right. I keep making terrible choices. I'm sorry, and I'll work on getting my act together, okay? Okay, and I'm really glad you're all right. How'd you get out of jail? Oh, Edward tracked me down somehow. He drove out three hours to come get me and paid the bail. He must really like you to make so much effort. What? No, he's just a gentleman. I'll go thank him. I know you don't want relationship advice from me, but Edward's a special guy, so don't let him go easily, okay? Just tell him you like him. I know you do. And so what if he doesn't like you back? I've been rejected by thousands of guys, and I'm fine. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Also, it's good to put yourself out there for someone worthwhile. Wow, you sound almost wise. So bizarre. Just go. Edward wasn't home, but their maid told me he'd gone to the restaurant. My heart was pounding as I thought about what I'd say to him. And then it started to rain. Great. This is how I wanted to confess my feelings. Looking like a wet poodle. Edward was alone in the restaurant and looked surprised to see me. Fiona, you're soaked. Here, take my jacket. I'll get you something warm. He ran off to the kitchen and came back with soup and dumplings. We're testing out our menu today. Want to give these a try? Okay, sure. Although I'm not happy about it. Oh my god. These these taste exactly like Mrs. Jianbing's. I hired her as the chef. That was always the plan, but I didn't tell you because you'd already assumed I'm a rich jerk who doesn't care about a small business owner. I told you, you're going to be a regular here. Okay, that's my cue to embarrass myself. So here goes. Edward, I came here to help you for thanking Mila, but there's more. And it's probably totally the wrong time because you just rekindled things with your ex, but I like you, okay? Yeah, I like you. Wow, this is so liberating. I really like you, Edward. And I don't care if you like me back because I was still strong enough to say it and I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. Also, I didn't rekindle anything with my ex. I literally took you to the gala to see if you'd get jealous of her. I like you too, Fiona. Really? Why? Because you act so much tougher than you are, and it's really cute. I am tough. Remember I gave you a wedgie once? I can do so much worse if you turn out to be a jerk. I'll keep that in mind. Now please shut up so I can kiss you. It was just as magical as I'd imagined, and it looks like I'd met my match. Yeah, I'm not gonna say, and then we lived happily ever after, cause that's dumb and cliched and not real. We lived happy most of the time ever after, and I wouldn't trade it for anything else.